All right, so I'm back to Trigger Happy Havoc. Let's do this shit. Now, we have to go to some sort of DVD room. Or whatever. What does it do here, honestly? Where am I? Uh, I think it's straight ahead. Don't want budge. It must be locked. Oh, shit. It's in this room. Oh, it's definitely this room. Huh. There's something inside the cardboard box. Oh, the DVDs. Yeah, a bunch of DVDs. And each one has a label with someone's name. This must be the video for each of us, he mentioned. I better go tell everyone. She just ran off. I didn't follow after her. I just stood right here where I was. DVDs in front of me had robbed me of all awareness. I was rooted in place. I think I see something. Next to the monitor is a high-end DVD player. I'll probably play those DVDs no problem. Maybe I'll just watch mine real quick before everyone else gets here. So I threw the DVDs and I found in the box and found one with my name on it. Then I slid it into the expensive looking player. I sat down and stared in intently at the darkened screen and then. Oh, oh is this family. And hey, look, this there's Kamaro with his parents. <laughs> and yeah, this this is before Ultra Despair goes out, guys. So, so Kamaro looks different in this game as opposed to Ultra Despair Girls. Like, she she looked way better in Ultra Despair Girls. And she even had a march, much larger role over there. In this game, she just appears in a video. I yelled out without realizing... It my in my heart start racing because what I saw on that monitor that's my family. God damn, Kamaro sounds different in this in this game. If I had ended here, there, that would have been fine. A message, message of love and support. After leaving my family behind to attempt Host Peak, it would have given hope, given me strength. If I was, if this was a normal school, I would have been happy. If, if a little embarrassed, with my family support to rely on. I would have been motivated to do even better. But there but here now it was totally different. I wasn't living in an ordinary school life. So I had a pretty strong feeling that the video wasn't going to end there. I hated having that feeling but turned out I was absolutely right. Damn. Now, now, don't worry, uh, guys, don't worry. Kamaru is completely fine, obviously, as seen in Ultra Asparagus. However, their their parents, uh, not so much. I played Ultra Asparagus already, so by this point, you might have found out. Maybe. But goddamn.
This time, it, I, I couldn't even, even make a sound. My voice just died. Where'd everyone go? It looks like a war zone sign. As it in reply, the voice came flow, flowing out of my speakers. I recognized the voice, of course. It was him. Like I said before, Kamaro survived, but sadly their parents did not. Well, Kamaro was in prison for a year and a half, and their parents had died in Ultra Sparrow Girls, or at least during the events of it. Or shortly before it, somewhere around there, look for an answer after graduation. Oh, that teases Ultra Spirit Girls, which I've long started already. And you could go check it out. Link, in the, link to the playlist of the Ultra Spirit Girls in the description. What is this? What happened to everyone? I started trembling. I could feel the fear and anger build up inside me like hot magma. God damn it! I slammed my fist against the desk over and over again. A single thought was racing through my mind. What else? How could I think about anything else? I have to get out of here. Have to get out right now. I need to make sure everyone's safe. Makoto, what happened? Make sure who's safe. I noticed everyone standing around the entrance to the AV room. They stared at me. Faces full of confusion. What's going on? Without a word, I point to the cardboard box. Is that what Makoto was talking about? What's on the... Alright. They all gathered around the box. Each of them grabbed the DVD with their name on it. One by one, they each rushed to a monitor. It didn't take long for them to react. Fuck, what the fuck? This can't be real, right? It has to be fake, right? Yeah, no way. It's real. No way. I can't take it anymore. I can't take this anymore. Let me out of here. As soon as I saw their reactions, I knew they all see something like what I've seen. Yeah, it's something terrible. Like, like, Makua is just pushing all, all these students to, to kill each other. Making them more desperate huh? to get out of here, like, for real. Nobody even bothered trying to hide their fear and confusion, except for her. Even now, she was totally calm. So, this is what he meant by motive. He wants to fuel our desire to leave so that we're more likely to start killing each other. It is the classic prisoner's dilemma. Let me use an example. Imagine two countries are on the brink of war, but both countries want peace and each commits to scaling back their forces as a sign of good faith. But there's a chance that one country may betray the other, so each country fears lowering their guard. The result is that neither scales back their forces and they both end up betraying each other. In other words, in fear of invisible teeth 
treachery becomes the greatest enemy of state stability. That kind of sounds like us right now. Everyone says says they they'll work together, but in our hearts, we're all afraid someone might betray us. Don't put those awful thoughts in your head. That's exactly what they want us to do. You can say that, but maybe you're thinking that once everyone drops their guard, you can just... What? This is exactly what Monokuma or whoever is behind this wants. They want us to fight. Don't you see? Yeah, you're right. We all need to calm down. Okay, then. Maybe we should start by all, all just talking. Maybe if we all just talk about what we saw, that'll help get everything out of our system. Besides, I think we're all super curious, right? I wonder what was in everyone's videos. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Hey, Saika. What is in your video, Saika? What's wrong? Just hurry up and tell us. Still no answer. <laughs> Saika? I gently placed my hand on her shoulder. Stop it. That left her speechless. Her video left her speechless. <laughs> she pushed my hand away and suddenly ran off. Saika? Let her go. I can't do it. That. I have to go make sure she's okay. I hate romantic comedies like, like this. I don't care what happens to her personally. That's because you're totally th thoughtless. I'm really worried. Then why don't you go do whatever you think you have to do? We don't all have to stick around together, right? Speaking of which, I'm, I have my own things to take care of. Goodbye. Everyone went their several ways, but I don't have time to worry about them right now. I have to find Sayaka. Yeah, I have to find Sayaka. Where she could have gone. I can't have, she I can't have gone too far. I should check around the school. All right, so, so we're gonna end it right there with this episode. So I'll see you guys next time with another episode of True Harry Attic. See ya.